right here. So this is actually gonna split the air. They also have this really cool like koi pond. Film anymore because they told me to stop recording. For a special kind of betta, but I'm gonna spread out the sand and really hope that I have enough. I'm like, filling in the back a little bit more. Wow, that's a lot of mess. This is probably the coolest tank I've ever set up. Hello and welcome back to the channel everyone. Today we are going to set up a betta fish quarantine tank. Now, if you don't know what that is, it is basically a tank that you set up for your betta fish before you put it into the real tank, the main tank, just to make sure they're not sick or have any parasites or anything like that. And then you can treat them in this tank without harming the other inhabitants in the tank or ruining anything in their permanent tank. So I'm going to get a betta fish in a week. However, this is actually pre-recorded, so tomorrow's video will be me buying the betta fish. Comment down below what betta I should buy tomorrow, because I think I want to buy a rare one, but there might be one that I see that I just really need to get. And I decided I'm going to start quarantining my fish because I have a new fish room now, I have some new tanks, and I want to take it a little bit more seriously now that I have the time to, and really make sure these fish are healthy. So we're going to go ahead and set up this tank. I got to get a new tank. I have to get some other stuff for it. And without further ado, make sure you drop a like down below so I know you like betta videos. And smash that subscribe button because we're on the road to 100,000, which is insane because I feel like we're just at a thousand. So thank you to all of you. But without further ado, let's go to the store. Let's get this stuff for this quarantine tank because I cannot wait to get a betta in a week. And I want to get this thing set up as soon as possible so it can cycle and build up all that beneficial bacteria to make sure it keeps the betta healthy. So let's go to the store. All right, so I'm in Walmart and the only thing that I need in here is this right here. So this is actually gonna split the air between the 10 gallon divided tank with the one filter I have and the filter that is going in the quarantine tank. This is actually really cool because it comes with like a little holder and then the little air tubes just kind of sit on the side like that and connect to that. But that is the only thing I need here. Now we need to go to the next door. All right, so I wanna go ahead and get some of this dragon stone here. Probably just gonna get like the biggest piece and then I can break it at home. But we got some $2.99 a pound. So I'm just gonna get probably the biggest one, like I said, and I'm just gonna break it up and use it for multiple aquariums. All right, so we got this piece here. I feel like I feel like this one would break nicely. I also have this small piece with like some red on it that I feel like I should get. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and get, I think I'm gonna go ahead and get both of these. They also have this really cool like koi pond. Hi buddy. He's probably mad hungry, but they don't have any food out for him, so I can't feed him. They got some like gold ones in there. Some pretty cool koi. Now I need to find some plants. Unfortunately, they don't have any plants that I want to get here. They don't really have many in, so I'm gonna have to get one at another store, maybe even PetSmart. Right, well, I just left the pet store and I couldn't film anymore because they told me to stop recording. Luckily, they didn't make me delete my footage, but I kind of got a good deal on these rocks. I think the scale that they weighed them with was probably not balanced. So I'll show you when I get home, but I got two like medium sized rocks and then this giant rock for only $12. So that's a pretty good deal. Like I said, I'll show you them when we get home. Okay, so it is several hours later. I went to one pet smart and they didn't have the tank. And then I had to call a bunch of other stores because I really want to set this up today. So I finally found one and it's dark out now. I have several in stock. So I'm going to go in and get the tank that I want to use for this quarantine tank. But what I'm here for is this right here. This two and a half gallon is going to be perfect for a little quarantine tank. Just so I can really keep an eye on the betta. As opposed to like a 10 gallon that's really big and would probably stress it out because of how much room there is. Being by itself and not having much in it since it is a quarantine tank. So this is going to be perfect. And I am back home. We got a bunch of stuff for this quarantine tank. Some stuff off camera. You may be wondering why I'm using a two and a half gallon. Main reason is because the bed is only gonna be in here for a week to two weeks. And I wanted something small that I can easily transport if I need to move the tank. And again, it's not a permanent tank, so it doesn't really need to be that big. But normally for a bed, I really would recommend at least a three gallon. And a three gallon is kind of my personal minimum. I typically use five gallons and more for my bedas. However, this quarantine tank is gonna be two and a half gallons. And it's also not gonna have many decorations. So really the fish is gonna be getting 
pretty much this entire two and a half gallon. Tank. Again, permanently, this is not a good size tank or anything smaller than this, but just because it's a quarantine tank between a week and two weeks, just make sure the bed is healthy and not gonna transmit anything to the other inhabitants in the tank. I'm gonna use this two and a half gallon. Now in terms of the tank, it is doing pretty well. This side is not done yet. I'm gonna be setting up that side of the tank soon for a special kind of betta, so make sure you stay tuned for that. But on this side, we still have the two shrimp and the snail. The snail is actually right back there. It is a golden mystery snail. I don't have a name for it. One of the shrimp are right there. And I'm having trouble finding the other one, but the plants, as you can see, are really starting to green up all four of those plants there. And our dwarf hair grass isn't doing too bad as well. But I'm gonna go ahead and set up the two and a half gallon right next to the stand because unfortunately it doesn't fit right here. I really thought it would, but it doesn't. And I do need to connect it to that air pump because I'm gonna split it in half with this splitter that I got right here. But it does need to be somewhat close to that. And I figured right there is a good spot. So without further ado, let's go ahead and set up our brand new beta quarantine tank. We gotta take this out and we need to actually wipe down the aquarium. All right. Now that we got that off. I need to go ahead and actually clean out this tank because there is some dust and some other stuff down here that we definitely don't want in this tank. So let me clean it out and I'll get back to you guys in a second. All right, now the quarantine tank is all rinsed out. And for a quarantine tank, you can actually do a bare bottom tank, but I really do prefer having some sort of substrate in my tank. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some sand from a previous tank that I set up that is already rinsed and sifted from a previous tank that I set up. I'm gonna use that in here. So the tank is all rinsed. It's time to put the sand in and actually get start building this thing. So I'm just gonna shake up this sand just a little bit because it's been in this bucket. And I'm just gonna go ahead and pour it in. Let's see, hopefully I have enough in this bucket. I think I do. Let's dump all this in here. All right, now I'm just gonna go ahead and spread out this sand. Ooh, it is so soft. But I'm gonna spread out this sand and really hope that I have enough. I think I do. And it doesn't really need to be a lot either because like I said, most quarantine tanks don't even have a substrate. I'm just kind of adding one because I like the look of it. And already the tank is starting to come together. I really do wish that bettas could live in smaller tanks because then I could fit a bunch more in my fish room and, and I could do a lot of different aquascapes and they just look really cute. Like little tanks just look really cute. And I understand why pet stores try to sell them because they're cute little tanks and it, and it doesn't take up much room. But unfortunately the reality is that bettas need five gallons or more, not two and a half gallons as a permanent tank. Now in terms of the aquascape, I did pick up three rocks. However, that one's quite large to be in this little tank. So I'm gonna pick one of these. I'm guessing this one's probably smaller. I do need to clean it, but I just wanna pick out what rock I want first. I don't know if I wanna just have it like be like that. Maybe that's good. I think that's good. Kind of push up more sand up against it just to keep it sturdy and see if I like it. Okay, so I think I am gonna use this rock. However, this rock is extremely dirty, like very, very, very dirty. So I need to go clean this with a toothbrush and some water and really make sure this thing is clean before I put it in the tank. So let's go ahead and go clean the rock. All right, so I got my rock and a toothbrush. Now I'm gonna go ahead and clean it. I'm gonna scrub it with this toothbrush and just some water to really get in the grooves and get out all the dirt I can because as you can see, my hand is already, maybe you can see it, maybe you can't. But my hand is already very orange from touching this rock just a little bit. So I'm gonna clean this now and then we can put it in the aquarium. All right, I think our rock right here is all set and all clean. So let's bring it to the aquarium and put it in there. All right, so now we can put it into the aquarium. I don't know what side I wanna have facing this way. Maybe this darker side, because the better will probably be like a lighter color. The other side looks like this. I don't know, I'm not really a fan of the lighter color. So I think, I'm gonna, I, think I am gonna stay with this darker color after I just got sand all over it. We'll have to fix that up in a second. But I think I'm gonna go at this side like this. And now I need to push the sand more up against the rock so it holds it in place. And I actually have something else to add in here that'll actually keep it still as well. In this container, I have the sifted sand, but the larger parts. And I'm gonna go ahead and add these around the actual dragonstone to kind of make it look like some smaller parts of it and really add some detail. And actually, before I put the other sand in, I'm just gonna go ahead and use this small paintbrush and try to dust off some of the sand here. Well, now it's a lot better. And I'm gonna go ahead and add in these larger pieces. And there we go. Right along the base of it, basically. And again, I'm gonna use this paintbrush to kind of spread it out and make it look a little bit more natural. Now, I definitely need some on this corner here. It's kind of giving me a hard time, but I think I'm just gonna end up putting a lot on this side because I do need to fill in some holes underneath. 
So I'm just gonna try and brush this under. It's a little tight squeeze, but it'll do. I'm um, so sorry that was out of focus, but I am currently just filling in the back a little bit more and finishing up this other side. All right, and now that that is done, I'm really loving how this looks and I'm very excited to continue to do more aquascaping because this is probably the most detail, or at least the most time I spent on just getting little rocks around a bigger rock and making sure it's sturdy. Now, like I said, for this aquarium, I'm going to be using a sponge filter because they're just the best. And also for a quarantine tank, you wanna use a sponge filter versus a hang on the back filter because most of the medicines will actually just get absorbed by a hang on the back filter, but not with a sponge filter. So I'm just gonna go ahead and open this up and start to set it up into the tank. We have our sponge, we have our little attachment piece here. And now I do have some tubing and I'm gonna go ahead and actually just lift this up real quick and filter this through and attach it to the sponge filter. And now that that's nice and secure, this is ready to go in the tank. So I purposely put the rock back there knowing that I was gonna put the sponge filter here. Luckily it does fit, I didn't really know if it was gonna fit or not. I kinda didn't measure it, but I'm gonna push it down as far as I can. And I'm gonna take all of this extra tubing and put it to the back because that is where it's gonna run up and go to that filter right there. I finally got the filter to a good spot right in that back corner and I did remove some of the rocks and some of the sand so that it's deeper down into the aquarium. And so head on, it's a little bit more hidden with the rock. But now I need to go ahead and open this up. All right, well, I'm having a little bit of trouble with this two-way valve. I've never used one of them before, so it's a little bit messy. I gotta figure it out. But the tube is going all the way up and connected to it. And the 10 gallons also connected to it and to here. But I just need to figure it out once I have our quarantine tank filled up. So let me go ahead and get some water and fill up our quarantine tank. Now that I've filled it up, the next thing to do is see if the filter works. So I'm gonna try and plug it in and I don't know if I plugged into the right thing. I can't believe it, but I got it to work. We have flow here and we have flow up here in the divided beta tank. Now this quarantine tank is not quite done. It needs some plants. I'm gonna go ahead and take out this little Anubius right here. Let me just take the lid off and reach down and grab it. Now I'm using an Anubius from this, wow, that's a lot of mess, but I'm using this Anubius right here because these things do not die. And also they're a great starter plant. So let me go ahead and put this in and figure out where I want it. I probably wanna just put it right in front here. Just kind of have two little decorations type of things. Go ahead and cover it up with some sand. This is probably the coolest tank I've ever set up, but here is the brand new and my first official beta quarantine tank. Here we go. Here's a good look at it. It's insane. And I cannot wait to do more tanks like this. Here you go. extra thing i did put my plant right next to it but it's not in the water so no worries what about any fertilizers or anything like that even though it doesn't have any but i'll make sure it stays out of the water i just think it makes it look even better and more green having it next to it i mean tell me this is not like one of my best tanks i've ever set up i know it doesn't have too much in it and i could add more however it is a quarantine tank and it's really just to monitor the bed i put in here for a week or two to make sure that it doesn't have any illnesses or diseases and so that if it does i can treat it in here so now i'll be going to get a betta in a week after this tank is cycled the beneficial bacteria and the plant and some sand from my already cycled 10 gallon divided betta tank so definitely comment down below what betta i should get in a week because i'm super excited to even have the betta in this tank just because i know it's gonna look super cool and also if you're wondering i will be adding this piece of glass to the top so comment below what you think of our new betta quarantine tank like i said normally quarantine tanks are five or 10 gallons, but because I'm only quarantining mine for a week or two, and it's only gonna be one betta fish, I figured the two and a half gallon would be good. Then I can also see it up close and really take a look at it. And also, if I do have to medicate the betta, it'll also make it easier for water changes and adding new medicine and stuff like that because it's a smaller water volume. Before I go, I also want to mention that these three boxes right here, these pretty large boxes right here are for a new aquarium series. Never been done before, it's gonna be 
epic. So make sure you have those post notifications on so you stay up to date as to when I'm gonna be uploading the first episode and maybe a little sneak peek of what it actually is. But yeah, I already have enough for three episodes because I know the series is gonna be very, very fun to film.